Um, it was a birthday, it's birthday present for when I was working with, with John Mayer. We went out and I was probably playing in Austin, that show called Austin City Limits, on my 50th birthday, which was in 19... Uh, no, two, it wasn't 19, what I'm talking about. Um, and this, he surprised me with this in the, just before we went on. So it was a, it was a present. Before I got this, I had a, another Dreadnought, which I've still got, actually, it's a uh, 1970 um, D18. So that's mahogany uh, back and sides, whereas this is rosewood. Um, and I like using my Gibson because I love playing it, but that's, um, that's very different. I mean, that's a mahogany body as well, but it's a more of a jumbo shape. Um, uh, and not quite as full bodied as these, you know, but lovely to play. That's a J50, which is the, which is kind of J45 ish, yeah, but with the with the adjust with an adjustable bridge, so you can get the action right down on it, which I quite like. <laughs> what kind of um, how do you like to string your acoustics up? What well, strings? Yeah. Twelve to f to uh, fifty two, Diodario, the whatever I can never remember the J. 16 or something is that the one yeah yeah and you mentioned sort of mahogany sort of versus rosewood do you have any do you have any feeling that that one is easier to record with than the other or? well i always thought mahogany is better because it's just a bit more open a bit lighter you know they can get a bit rosewood can be a bit boomier fine I, mean, I think as it ages it gets it sort of lightens up a little bit but um the d18 is mahogany uh, Gibson's mahogany as well. This has got quite. This has really opened up a lot in the last ten years. It's about ten years older, and it's um, it's nice for strumming. Very nice strummer. This one. When you're sort of recording in a sort of a space similar to this, you know, where you can't turn up necessarily as, you know, all the way up, um, people 
reading the magazine, got home studio, similar situation. What kind of amps do you like to use for those kind of lower volume scenarios? Well, it's small, smallish amps. I've got a Princeton at home, a uh, Marshall 20 to use, and a little low Ahu, a little 50s lap steel amp, which is really good. But I've also got a speaker hidden inside a, um, I kind of made it myself. You can buy it, you can buy it now, sort of a little isolation cabinets, you know, which you could have in your front room and you can, you could just have, you just have an XLR or like a, obviously a socket for the, for the speaker and an XLR socket so you can just, you can have a mic housed inside it or a couple if you want. But I just made this myself, it's like an ottoman, like a, like a wooden bench seat with a flap on the top and I just mount, I put a baffle in there and mounted a 12 inch Jensen speaker in it and put a couple of duvets down with a, um, an SM57 pointing towards the speaker and then another duvet on the top. I mean, that works pretty well because you, you can play pretty loud, you know. You can actually whack it up. It's not the greatest sound in the world, you know. I mean, if you're in a... But you can't get any room on it, for instance. You know, it's going to be completely dry. But uh, the fact that all the duvets haven't got any standing waves or anything like that to worry about. So it actually sounds pretty good. I get pretty good results out of it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's less nerve-wracking than playing live, dep you know, depending on who, you, who you're playing in, in front of, you know. Um, and you've always got that. You've always got, if you've got, uh, if you've got separation, you've always got that element where you can go back and fix something. <clears throat> so you can, <clears throat> you can take, take chances, you know. Um, it's funny, it's actually harder to overdub and, and get the right feel. Then you always get the right feel when you, when you're playing with the drummer, or especially if you're sitting next to him, um, and the, the, the overdubbing sort of like another hurdle <clears throat> to get over. Um, and your dynamics are always going to be better when you're playing playing live with with somebody. Um, so I mean, the only the only sort of problems in the studios is. is uh, as I say, it's harder to overdub. I like cutting tracks live. I think most most professional musicians that have done it so they've actually the 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 nicest thing about being able to about record about playing in general is going and cutting tracks live because you can kind of be creative and then go and listen to it. So it's terribly vain, but actually great fun. You know, you do a gig and it's great fun, but you never you don't really know what happened. I mean, these days, you, a lot of people record gigs and things on phones and stuff. But there's nothing like doing it live in the studio with a really good sound and then going and listen to it on the monitors, you know. It's very, very rewarding. That is so very, very vain. I've got, I've got my t guitars that I've had for a long time that I kind of always tend to fall back on, like my tellies. Still got the telly that my grandfather bought for me when I was 18. So I had a guitar before that I had nicked and I didn't have any money, so he bought me a Telecaster, which was, which was new in the 70s, so it's not like particularly collectible. I then got a Les Paul, which I've got here, which is a deluxe. So I've had that nearly 40 years, that guitar. 
Um, then I like the old, I like those old silver tones with the, I love the lipstick pickups. There's just something about them, something sort of airy and bassy about them that I really like. Um, I like, I've got my Duesenbergs, I've got a few of those because I know Dieter, uh, they're a really good workhorse kind of guitar. Very well made. Um, I've fallen in love with this old 60s SG Junior, which has got one black dog-eared P90 on it, which is amazing. Uh, I've got a Flying V from the 70s, which is, which is great. Um, uh, I've got f about four or five resonator guitars now. Two, two made in France by Mike Lewis, but his company's called Fine Resophonic. The one, that's the one I use to, with people to see me play with John Mayer. Um, play, what else I've got? I've got, I've got a few Strats. Actually, my favourite ones, I haven't got any old... I used to have a 57 Strat and I sold it years ago, so I didn't have any money. I've got a couple of... Um, I've got 62 reissues, really nice. Um, and then I've got a 70s one with three bolts in it that's actually my favourite. You know, and on paper it should be rubbish, but it's actually fantastic. I changed the pickups in it, but other than that... I've got all the songs written and partly recorded for a new album with, with my band, which is kind of um, the, the heart of which is me and Paul Beavis, the drummer, who plays with Andy Fairweather Low as well, and Steve Smith, who plays keyboards and sort of co-produces stuff with me. That is, we do it all this studio. And I've got a mate of mine, Steve Wilson, playing bass, and Peter Hope Evans, the harmonica player used to be medicine head all those years ago he plays in my band and jody lynn scott plays in the band playing percussion as well so it's a six piece got all the songs written and i partly recorded but i've got to go and go in and finish that uh and i'm also working in early stages of working on a an album which is a sort of tribute to chet atkins He's like, oh i've got his country gentleman i've got to mention that <laughs> gretz country gentleman i've had a couple of gretches but too. Um, so we're working on that, and that'll be some of my tunes and some... We're trying to imagine what songs... Just Chet Atkins, you know, it's famous for for covering songs, you know, um, the old and new. So we're trying to imagine what songs he might cover from the more recent years. Uh, got to have a good tune for an instrumental, really. Good sound, I suppose. I mean, the sound's part of parts. Is just the sound is just as much a part of what you play, really. Um, and I still think that a microphone in front of an amplifier sounds better than than I hate to say it than any kind of software. What I've found is that there's a great phrase: sound, sounds having value for money. Whereas they're much easier to mix. I, mean, I was fine with, with, with virtual guitar sounds. They're really hard to, to mix. They're either too loud or, or they're just, just, you can't hear them at all. And it's some, it must be something to do with the waveform or something, I guess. I mean, you'd know more about this than me, but, but um, um, even things like 
like those Brockmans and pods and things like that. There's something about the about the sound of it which makes it really hard to to place. Whereas when you when you record an amp with a microphone, it kind of finds its own space in the mix somewhere. So it's something to do with frequencies or the waves or. Um, so I would I would always I would always use an amp where wherever possible unless you got you're going to deafen people or wake the neighbours up or whatever. Um, so and listen while you're playing that's the most important thing. Learn to play well enough so you can listen while you're playing. <laughs> 